Hey, what's up out there? It's your boy Way D, uh, aka Dream Slide. I was going to do another beat video or music video, whatever you want to call it, but my Adobe Premiere doesn't like me today. It's saying it doesn't know what a video is and won't accept it. Uh, so I figured I'd do a tutorial instead using Camtasia. This is my first time using Camtasia. I am very new to the program. Hopefully this and Pro Tools will run side by side. Figure I'm going to start doing some uh, Pro Tools tutorials because there's not many user tutorials out there. Like Pro Tools is only for studio standard industry people and it's not. It's a really great tool. I mean, that's my preferred DAW. A lot of people like Cubase, Logic, Sonar, so forth. But, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm a fan of Pro Tools. All right. But uh, today we're going to speak about side chaining. Um, side chaining in my definition is when you take the audio output of one track and use it to control an effect or parameter on another track. Um, I'm going to give you three examples of this today. Uh, this first one here um, is probably the most common used, well, one of the two most common used ways of using side chaining. Um, side chaining is a great thing to have in your arsenal as a producer, engineer, beat maker, anything. It's really useful. All right, now this first one that we're going to do is going to be used to make uh, what we call a stutter. You hear it in synths and vocals, all kinds of stuff. All right, so what I did first is I did a normal click track uh, and I made an aux input for it. You know, a little aux track. I made a click track. And if you have any questions about any of the stuff, making tracks, difference between audio, masters, aux tracks, Ask me, I'll be more than happy to make another video for you guys. Today, I figured I'd just start with a more advanced video. Um, so if you guys can't keep up, just, like I said, message me. I'll make an, a real basic Pro Tools for, you know, beginners, and we'll go from there, and we'll build up. Uh, all right, so I made um, two aux inputs. First one I made is a click track, just your normal t t t t, -t metronome, you know, uh, this particular one's at 160 beats per minute. All right. What it is is I took the output of that click track and put it into uh, a normal audio track and recorded the audio into it. So, you know, when you play it, you just have click, 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 you know, nothing special. All right. So um, then on top of that, I recorded a synth pad, you know, just to give the, you know, the stuttering effect. You know, this is what's going to be stuttering, this synth track that you hear going on right now. Alright, nothing special, nice little synth pad, can go a lot of different ways. Alright, so for you to do this, you're going to have to, there's two ways. You're going to have to rather A, make another aux track, which you see here, um, and you're going to put a gate on it. A gate is something that uh, allows signal to go through if it's loud enough. Once again, if you don't, you know, if you need more examples of what gating is and what, what gates are, let me know. I'll be more than happy to make another video. All right. But what it is here for this gate, um, most of Pro Tools effects can do side chaining. All right. This is your key input. It's pretty much asking you, where do you want me to get the audio from the side chain? Now, you can leave it on no key input and it's just going to, you know, do a normal gate on a track that you have selected. But I selected a key input. I, I usually name all my bus tracks. For this one, I'm going to use a click example as what I'm speaking of here. All right, so we have that in your key input. You also have to turn side chaining on. That's what that little key is here. It says you want to receive audio from the side chain or the key input. All right, um, this is my parameters for my gate. Once again, another video if you guys need to know more about gate parameters. All right, so now we have the gate that is ready to set something from the imp the output that says click example all right so this this track here which we had our click on this, this click audio track we're going to take the output of that and we're going to match it up with the click example as well all right so now we have that feeding the side chain all right you guys understand how i did that cool okay now we have this synth going on here. Now, you have to tell the synth to also go to this aux track, all right? So I made another bus track that says synth example. And then the little bus fader comes up. How much do you want to send to that track? And, you know, that's your fader level for that, okay? Now, 
you set the input of your aux track that you have your gate on. This is this is the more complicated way. Uh, to um, the same that you're sending your synth from for the synth example. Okay, we're going to turn this on. All right. Well, first here, this is with it. This is with it off. You know, no side chaining stutter or anything like that. All right, nice pad. And this is after you set your side chain up. It should sound something like this. Okay. And that's cool because also we did it to the metronome. We know that it's always on the beat. You know, if you're having a vocalist or someone that's playing another instrument on there and they need more help finding the beat and they're not real fond of clicks, things like this really help those kind of musicians out. All right. Another way you can, if you want to, like that's if you want to run them hand in hand, the unside chain one and the side chain one, you can do that. If you don't, you can just put the gate on the actual synth track um, and do it that way. Same thing. That way you don't have no normal pad you just hear. It's just straight the side chain one. Feel me? All right. So that's one way to use side chaining. We're going to move on to my next example.